Hey, this is Tiffany Mayer of Tiffany Mayer Designs, and I just finished up redecorating my two-year-old daughter's bedroom, and we built a custom radiator cover that I thought you all might be interested in. So let's go take a look. First, you're going to want to measure your radiator. You're gonna need the full width from left to right, including any valves, the height of your radiator, and the depth from the wall. I like to give any radiator cover a few inches on all sides once it's built to have a little breathing room around the radiator. Next I started on the actual design of the radiator cover. I took inspiration from my daughter's comforter and sheet set which have polka dots and flowers on them and started with a conceptual design. My father and I worked on the design together. I did the original sketch and showed him what my concept was and he picked up where I left off and stylized it even further. During our design process we considered a few things. First, the actual layout of the design on the front. We wanted to make sure that enough heat was being released from the radiator into the room. Second, we thought about the actual integrity of the wood after it was cut. The design elements had to be far enough apart that the wood would stay strong, but still take up enough of the wood to still have that heat be released into the room. Once we had the actual design laid out, we got a piece of paper that it was roughly the same size as what our radiator cover would be and started laying our design out to scale. Make sure that when you're laying your design out on the larger scaled piece of paper that your lines are very crisp and clean. Next you're going to want a light table or a large window. You're going to take your final sketch and you're going to tape it to the surface backwards. Now that we can see through the paper, you're going to want to find your design lines and scribble on them with your regular number two pencil. Using your measurements from earlier, you're going to mark the MDF board with those measurements and using a straight edge, create straight lines and cut out the front of your radiator cover. We used a 3 quarter inch MDF for the front of this so that it would still be strong enough to support all of the holes we'd be making into it and not be too large that it would become very heavy. After the MDF was cut, we laid the actual baseboard molding that we were going to be using around the radiator cover on the bottom so that we could align our sketch above the molding. Make sure your design is centered on the board and then tape it off. Using a ballpoint pen, you're gonna go over all of the same lines on your design to transfer your pattern onto the front of the MDF. After you finish transferring your design onto the MDF, you can remove the paper. Then taking a permanent marker, go over all of those lines again to darken them. Believe me, there's a lot of steps, but at least this way you'll be able to see exactly where your design is when you're going to cut and will save you tons of time later. Cutting out your design can be somewhat tedious, depending on the type of design you do. But you're going to want to start with a pilot drill hole, and then using a jigsaw go through and cut out your design. Depending on how complicated your design is, you might want to go through and put an X on all the areas that will be cut out, so that while you're cutting there's no confusion. Sanding your project is going to be the one thing that's going to make your radiator cover look really great. After you've cut it out, you're going to have little rough edges and maybe jump points where the blade wasn't totally smooth. You're going to want to smooth all that out with sandpaper so that when you're painting, you have a nice clean surface. After everything has been cut and sanded, you're going to want to prime it. The MDF is going to soak up a lot of the paint that you're going to put on it, so priming it's going to help it a little bit, but you're still going to have to put on a couple of coats of paint to get the MDF completely covered. Once your paint is dry, you're going to want to apply your mesh. You're going to attach the mesh to the back of the face front of the radiator cover. To finish it off, we used the rest of our MDF for either side and our base molding and nailed it all together around the radiator. We found the top at our local hardware store. It was a pre-made, ready for stain hardwood countertop that we stained a dark walnut color, cut it to size and nailed it to the top of our radiator cover. In the end, you get a custom designed piece of furniture that not only covers up the radiator, but also adds a level of design and interest to your room.